we we have a terrific economy. It's like a great athlete that's yeah. that's had a cardiac arrest, you know, and it's it's flat on the floor, and the paramedics have arrived, and you know they shouldn't argue about whether they put the resuscitation equipment, you know, a quarter of an inch this way or a quarter of an inch that way, or they shouldn't start criticizing the patient yeah. because he <laughs> didn't have blood pressure tests or something like that. They should do what's needed right now, and I and I think they will. Incident, I think the Congress will do the right thing. I think that they've, you know, they get into certain arguments and they start worrying about assessing blame and there's a little demagoguery. But in the end, something this important, they'll do the right thing. This, this isn't, this really is an economic Pearl Harbor. I, that sounds melodramatic, but I've never used that phrase before, and this really is one. But go through why that is true, beyond the fact that there's a freeze on credit, beyond the fact that nobody's making loans, beyond the fact that banks don't lend to banks, beyond the fact that Treasury bills are at a low. Yeah, when. When 40 billion of Treasury bills are sold like they were last week, seven-day Treasury bills, at a yield of one twentieth of one percent, that means the whole country is basically at the point virtually, or a lot of the country is at the point of putting their money under the mattress. I mean, you're only one, tw one twentieth of one percent away from where it's better to put it under the mattress. You don't want 300 million Americans putting their money under the mattress. I mean, this economy doesn't work well without the lubrication of, of, of credit and trust. And that's been lost. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's a huge problem. What you have is you have the major institutions of the world all wanting to deleverage. They want to take down their assets and liabilities. They want to, what seemed so easy to borrow against a year ago, now it looks like rat poison to them. So they're trying to deleverage. There is only one institution in the world that can leverage up in a way that's at all a countervailing force to that, that's the United States Treasury. Are you approving of what has been taking place along the stages that got us to where we are now? Well, I Whether think... it's Bear Stearns or Lehman Brothers or AIG of Freddie and Fannie or what you've done with Goldman Sachs and the rest. Yeah, I think that basically the right things have been done, but but no one saw the the tsunami coming, you know, fully. And and so when Bear Stearns came along, it looked like if you stopped the flood at that point, you know, you didn't have to worry about being downstream from it. And and I, I think I think the Fed did the right thing there. And I really thought that would probably halt runs on other major institutions, but it didn't. We have seen wave after wave, and admittedly. There's been somewhat of an ad hoc response to it, but I'd rather have an ad hoc response than no response at all. And I don't think, I don't think the Treasury could remotely have gone to Congress three or four months ago and laid out the scenario of what's happened and been credible and, and gotten the necessary tools. I think, I think it took mm -hmm. a crisis like this. And I mean, asking for the powers, asking for they, and the levels it was asking no, for. No, they wouldn't have gotten it. So I, I, I think it's been you know, kind of like a tragic play uh, to this point. But at this point, I think it's clear and it will be clear to the majority of the Congress, I think it's clear to the American people, that there is only one countervailing force to a world where financial institutions are trying to sell instruments every day and where credit has dried up, and that's the United States Treasury.